What if our universe isn't the first one? Nobel Prize winning physicist Robert Penrose is convinced that the cosmos is subject to an eternal cycle of destruction and rebirth, and that every old universe is followed by a new one. This hypothesis is as fascinating as it is controversial. But now, of all times, the James Webb Telescope is showing us that something is wrong with our standard model of cosmology, as Webb peers deeper than ever into the most remote and ancient secrets of the universe. We're confronted with ever new structures that should not actually exist. In fact, surprisingly large, massive galaxies already existed in the early days of the universe, which were already mature when the cosmic clock had only just begun to tick. But what does this mean for our overall understanding? Do we have to finally say goodbye to the idea that the universe is unique? And what about the wondrous structures that Penrose interprets as the direct relics of a previous cosmos? Be sure to stay tuned until the end and find out with us. Did you know that we take an optical journey through time every night? When we marvel at the countless sparkling formations in the night sky, we don't see the stars and galaxies as they are now, but as they once were. The reason for this is simple. Ultimately, light also needs time to travel the gigantic distances of the universe and reach our earthly eyes. And this starts on a small astronomical scale. Even sunlight does not reach Earth instantly. It takes around 8 minutes and 20 seconds to reach us. And this principle of cosmic time travel is crucial for correctly interpreting the discoveries made by the James Webb Telescope. The further we look into space, the further back we travel in the history of the universe. But how do we actually know exactly how old the structures in the firmament are? Well, it's good you asked because this is exactly where redshift comes into play. As an important tool for determining the age of objects in the cosmos, it shows us how much the light from a distant source has shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. This shift occurs because space itself expands while the light is traveling. The farther away a galaxy is, the longer its light has to travel, causing the wavelengths to stretch more and the redshift to be higher. Against this background, the following principle applies. The higher the redshift, the further away, and thus older, the light source is. By studying such remote structures, the James Webb Telescope opens a living window to long-gone eras of the cosmos. However, things get a little tricky when what Webb observes in the depths of space simply does not match our theoretical predictions. What the young universe should have looked like To understand why Webb's discoveries are so problematic, we need to take a quick look at the standard model of cosmology and consider what the cosmos should have actually looked like in its early days. According to the prevailing assumption, our universe was born about 13.8 billion years ago with the Big Bang. However, this was not an explosion into an existing space. No, it was rather space itself that emerged from an original singularity, together with time and matter. This cosmic seed results when we look back at the evolution of the universe. After all, since its inception, it has had the characteristic of expanding spatially. Conversely, it's therefore possible to calculate backwards to a point where the density of matter and energy is infinite and all spatial distances are zero. But what happened after the much-cited Big Bang? Well, immediately after the Big Bang, the universe underwent a phase of extremely rapid expansion in a fraction of a second. Researchers explain the homogeneity and other observed properties of the cosmos with this so-called cosmic inflation, which inflated the newly formed universe to an enormous size. Basically, however, the primordial universe did not yet have much in common with its present appearance. At that time, it was still extremely hot and dense, resembling a cosmic fireball in which light and matter were inextricably intertwined. After several hundred thousand years, however, the cosmos cooled down to such an extent that protons and electrons combined to form neutral hydrogen. Light was now able to travel freely, and we can still measure the cosmic microwave radiation that was created during this recombination epoch today. This was followed by the Dark Age. At that time, there were simply no light sources that could illuminate the cooling clouds of electrically neutral gas. There was also no trace of larger objects. In fact, there weren't even tiny dust particles. 
because carbon and all the other heavy elements had not yet seen the light of the cosmic world. And speaking of the light of the cosmic world, this was switched on about 100 million years after the Big Bang, when the further cooling and compression of the gas masses heralded the era of the first stars and galaxies. However, and this is the crucial point, the galactic premature babies were still small and low in mass, because after all, according to our understanding, there was simply not enough normal matter at that time to form galaxies of the magnitude of the Milky Way. The catch, however, is that the James Webb Telescope has shown that the cosmos is apparently not very interested in our understanding. What Webb actually discovered As the most powerful space telescope ever built, Webb was designed specifically for infrared astronomy to explore, among other things, the first luminous objects that formed after the Big Bang and the subsequent Dark Age. Experts had hoped that Webb would revolutionize our understanding of the early universe in this way. And it did, albeit in a completely different way than astronomers would have liked. The first series of observations already showed that some early galaxies were much more developed than our standard model of cosmology allows. These include objects that already existed 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang and yet already contained almost as many stars as our home galaxy does today. Equally confusing is the galaxy Jades-GS-Z-14-0, with a redshift of about 14.2, which means nothing less than that this structure already existed about 290 million years after the creation of the universe. It, too, is significantly brighter, heavier, and larger than experts had previously thought possible. With a redshift of 14.44, MOM-C14 is even 10 million years older and once again amazes scientists with its remarkable luminosity. In addition to these confirmed objects, there are also several photometric candidates with even higher redshifts. These are structures whose distances have been estimated solely from the colors of the light. And while some of them have redshifts of over 16, preprints even list candidates with values of 20 to 30. But caution is advised, as long as these have not been confirmed spectroscopically, we must proceed with caution. After all, the supposedly extreme redshift could ultimately be due to dust. Either way, Webb's discoveries so far show that something is wrong with our current understanding of galactic evolution. How did these objects manage to grow so quickly in such a short time? Well, we don't know. But what we do know is that the young cosmos was apparently much more vibrant complex and efficient than we had assumed. Farewell to the Big Bang, Roger Penrose and the Cyclic Universe Our standard model reaches its limits in the early days of the cosmos. But what if the astronomical thorn actually goes much deeper? What if we have misjudged not only the evolution of early galaxies, but even the history of the universe itself? Well then we would have arrived straight at the so-called conformal cyclic cosmology of British Nobel Prize winning physicist Roger Penrose. His idea is nothing less than a radical alternative to the classic Big Bang theory. It states that the Big Bang was by no means the beginning of everything and that our universe is not unique. Instead, the cosmos has always been going through an eternal cycle of creation and destruction. Each universe has a complete lifespan from a hot, dense beginning through billions of years of expansion to a cold, largely empty end. Penrose argues that every dying universe can lay the foundation for a new cosmic world. But how did he come up with this fascinating idea? Mathematically, he bases his model on what is known as conformal geometry. In an extremely expanded universe, mass and time lose their significance for the geometric structure of space in a certain way. This allows the end of an old universe to be seamlessly linked to the beginning of the next. Black holes are again a central component of this approach. While they decay in the old universe through Hawking radiation, the energy and information of this radiation could be transferred in some form to the next universe and thus be detected. Penrose suspects that these remnants leave behind small traces that could be detectable in the cosmic microwave background radiation or CMB for short. And here's the thing, Penrose and his colleagues have already identified certain patterns in the CMB that could turn out to be hawking points. 
Basically, these are small, concentric areas with slightly elevated temperatures. And according to Penrose, we may be dealing here with the direct fingerprints of a previous universe. However, this interpretation is not entirely free of criticism among other experts, as such patterns could also be caused by statistical noise. And although there is no clear confirmation of the cyclic model as yet, it does shed a completely new light on our cosmic home. Because then the Big Bang would not have been the absolute starting point, but merely the transition to the next chapter of an infinite book. And regardless of whether Penrose's assumptions are ultimately correct or not, Webb's discoveries show us that the early universe was far more complex than we ever imagined, and that the question of the beginning of the cosmos is far from being answered. The question of how you make sure you never miss a new video from us again is easy to answer. Simply click on the thumbs up icon and subscribe to stay up to date from now on. See you soon.